Hey Nelly, this video is probably not going to be very long, just as an introduction. Uh, to be very honest with you, I've made two other recordings trying to stick on the topic of testing. Not really how to be a software tester, but what a software tester is. And I keep getting sidetracked. Reason for that is that it's hard to define uh, what a software tester is without explaining what a software tester does. Um, or what a tester in general does. Um, and that's that's where it becomes a larger than uh, 20 minute project. That's why it took that uh, Bach guy, you know, 100 minutes to um, talk about how to, how to be a software tester. For the most part, I'd say 80% of what, what he had in there was wonderful. It was pure gold. I actually sent it to a uh, uh, testing director friend of mine um, who's in charge of a group that I uh, helped to um, make possible um, and uh, sent it to him and said hey if I had seen this guy seen this lecture when I started working there started doing this it would have fixed so many problems and issues that I had um, so I'd recommend that you watch it, and if you want to, send it on to your guys to watch because it was, it was wonderful. I told him to maybe skip the first 24 minutes because that part of it I found aggravating and a bit frustrating. Um, uh, but uh, it, and and I'll explain a little bit more as to why I found that aggravating or frustrating. Uh, but the rest of it was just was just wonderful. Um, and so here's. Here is the as basic as I've been able to um, term it as uh, as to what a tester is. Uh, a tester is a person who interacts with something, whether that be some code or an interface or an application or a device or an object. It, it's a very broad topic. Um, it's, it's a person who interacts with something to determine its functionality. Not the proposed functionality, but the functionality, the actual true functionality of that thing. Um, uh, you might think that that sounds a little bit like hacking or penetration testing if you're going to use it for something other than what it's intended to. Um, but there is, there is a big difference. Um, with, with testing in general, uh, what it is that you do is, is you know, say, say you get a new toy off the line and you have to test it. So let's say it's a red truck, a, a red truck that you play with, it's a toy. Um, as a tester, you would play it with that truck. You would do everything you can think of that a child would do with it as a means of play or test. And that includes throwing it in the toilet, throwing it against the wall, throwing it out of a window, throwing it against another toy truck, throwing it against a kid. Um, maybe not against a kid. You don't want to throw trucks against a kid. Uh, I, I guess you got to think about that. <laughs> so you want to, you're going to do with it everything that a child would do with it, whether or not that's considered play or not. Uh, and you would do some additional things with it. You would see if you could take it apart, what things you would need to take it apart. Um, and after you get done taking it apart, you would give it back in pieces to the person that made it and said, okay. And you'd give them a list of everything that you did because you wrote it all down, each step that you took to get to whatever ending result that you were expecting and what the actual result was that you got. And you'd hand them all this stack of paper along with the pieces of, of the toy truck and say, this is what I figured out it can do. The difference between a tester and a, and a hacker or a, uh, a penetration tester is that um, they wouldn't stop at just taking it apart. They would see if they can put it back together and make something else, like a gun or um, a spaceship. And, and then they would use that and take it back to the developer and say, um, is is this a problem? And they would say it sarcastically because they know that it's a problem and they would expect the developer to fix it. Um, as a tester, 
you're just trying to figure out exactly how it works. And that's it. Other Others would, will likely try and tell you that as a tester, you're trying to confirm that something works in a particular manner, and that's that's not true. Um, it's just it it's at its very core is not true. So this is stuff I was talking about before. We're not going to worry about it. I I started saying that the um, general mentality that you should have on people trying to tell you how to test is cool story, bro. Um, that it's you know it's adorable that you think that you know, but you don't. So thank thank you for offering, but I I got work to do. Leave me alone. Um, the uh, uh, oh, kind of lost my train of thought. Give me a second. Um, so as a, as a tester, you're going to be told uh, that you need to test something called a happy path. And there are all sorts of terms for what happy path means. Essentially, what this means is that uh, something is made, and it was made so that A can cause Z to occur. Okay? That's it. They want to make sure that you can get from A to Z. And so they'll come by and say, hey, I just need you to test that you can go from A to Z. That is all they want you to test. And as a tester, you should find this problematic and a little bit uh, aggravating. Because your first question is going to be, well, what happens if I go from A to A? Or B, or C, or D? And you're going to keep going like this, and you're going to want to know what happens if you do that. Or what happens if you go from A to 1? What happens? So they're going to come by and say, this is your job, is the happy path. That what we want to do happens. And that anything else that could happen doesn't necessarily matter because we just want you to make sure that what we want it to have, what we want it to do, can be done. And that's dangerous. This is, this is a problem when they only want you to do happy path testing. Because they're saying that they're okay if, if, a to Y can happen if Y is the database, um, and and Z is the response from the server from the database as to what it is that was being put in there, and and they're saying they don't want you to to, to find out if a user can get to the database. They just want to make sure that when you click on the button, that it actually places an order or it actually updates a, a form field in someone's account page. Um, so you're going to get asked to do this a lot, happy path testing. Uh, as a tester, though, your, your responsibility is not to do A to Z. Your responsibility is to do A to, D to Z and then dot, 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 everything else. Um, so in that example that, that uh, um, Bach gave, um, he had a diagram up, right? And the diagram showed, you know, input A goes to um, interacting with A. And then if A is less than 70, respond with yes. And if it's not, then respond with no. And if it responds with no, then it goes to stop. Responds to yes, and it goes and records it, and then it stops. Um, but it's that input piece that can be used in so many ways. Uh, Input usually means that someone other than the developer is going to be interacting with it. And who knows who that person is actually going to be. If it's just a standard user, if it's going to be a hacker, um, if it's going to be someone, if it's going to be a spam bot, um, who knows who's going to be interacting with it, why, and what that means. So as, as a tester, it is, it is not your job to do what is defined within the context of whomever is telling you that they want you to do work. It is to perform to the best of your ability uh, the most tests that you can to provide the most value from your job to whomever it is that's doing the requesting. So they might say only test A to Z and you can respond and say A to Z works, but you should also report back what happens when you go A to Y and B to Z, 
and three to chipmunk. And so on. And the reason why is because for the most part, it has been my experience that when you are given a task to test something, there is someone along the way that has made a, a definition for you as to what A is and what Z is, and they're confused by what they either want or what they mean or how they've communicated it. Um, um, so as an example, I have, uh, because I've worked in this industry for about um, eight, eight years now, uh, the first place I started off and I was there for about uh, six years. I still have friends that are over there and I still talk to them. Um, but in, uh, in one of the houses that I've worked in, uh, I, have a, I have a friend who's a product manager um, and he came back and said that after a particular uh, uh, sell-off meeting, which happens in, in Agile, uh, he, he pointed out that what he had asked for, this happy path, this A to Z, that it didn't work. That you, you would go from A, you'd click the button, Z would respond with a message, but the process, this here, wouldn't work. It didn't do what it was supposed to. So like the, the B, C, D, E, F, like all the way to Z, none of that worked. And, and development came back and said, oh, you wanted it to work? Uh, you didn't stipulate that in your conditions and terms for this particular project, uh, which, which floored him, which perplexed him. Um, and and it, that's primarily because the, the person that's coming to you and telling you that this is how you need to test something doesn't quite understand what one person in the process wants, needs, or um, deserves to have. So. I'm going to tell you about the different people in the process, their responsibilities and roles, and why it is that you need to give them this and not just the portion that they asked for. Um, you have the user stakeholder. These are people that use the system. Um, that, that's probably the best, best way to put it. These are the people that use whatever it is that you're testing, and they're the audience, the target for which the current thing is being made. Um, this could be uh, salespeople on a new customer uh, record management software. It could be uh, users of a uh, social network. Um, and this could be a child playing with a toy, uh, and the child is the user or stakeholder. This is the intended audience of the product that you're testing. Okay, so I'll just put that there. Intended audience. Then you have the product manager. Let me scroll down here a bit. Product manager, they, uh, they act as kind of a filter for the users. Um, user, uh, I guess so, user filter. Um, so as the user is saying, hey, you know, you gave me this red truck and it was really cool. Um, but when I push it, I want it to make sounds. And when it makes sounds, I want it to light up. And when it lights up, I want it to play a song. And when it plays a song, I want it to change from red to green. Um, and so that's what the user is expecting. The product manager takes that and goes, okay, well, you know, it makes sense that when you, when you push it that you want it to make sounds. Because, I mean, it's a truck. Why wouldn't you want it to make sounds? Um, but why would it light up? I mean, do you want it to be a fire truck? If so, do you really want it to be green? So the product manager will basically, t will basically take um, all the info returned from the user and actually hash out what it is that the user wants. So that when they go to development, they can actually make it. So that instead of development starting to make a red truck that makes noise and lights up and plays a song and turns green and then maybe it turns back to red afterwards instead of having to build this monstrosity of a toy that no one's ever going to want to play with because what I just described almost made me throw up in my mouth um, 
development actually gets something from product management that is worth making because it's going to make money. So then development, after they get done making it, they give it to a tester. And the tester is supposed to determine functionality. Um, and someone might view this more laterally. They might say, first it starts with the user. And then it goes to the product manager. I'm just going to abbreviate that. Really? Why did it not capitalize that time? Oh, okay, it's two dashes. Um, sorry, I had to stop and test something. <laughs> so that goes to the product manager. The product manager gets it and sends it on to a developer after they've hashed out with the user. So it goes back and forth between user and product manager, and then if something eventually goes to the developer. The developer gets it, we start playing with it, and they make something and they give it to the tester. And then the tester takes it, and they either give it back to the developer, or they give it to the user, because it's being deployed. But that's that's not true. That's that's quite honestly, the tester gives it to the product manager. They give it back to the product manager, um, and also to the developer. Um, they give them back to them both. Uh, reason why is because the user. Is the, per, is the point of view that you as a tester are playing with it from. Okay, you are not testing it from the product manager's perspective. You are not testing it from the developer's perspective. You are playing with it and determining its functionality so that when a user gets it, you know exactly what it is that they can or cannot do with it. So you want to provide all that feedback back to the product manager. So the product manager can take a look at that and say, oh, Based off our conversations, based off of the meetings that we've had, you know, points, you know, one through five that you made are okay, they're acceptable, but points six through 97 are unacceptable. It should not explode when they're playing with it. It should not get them addicted to cocaine while they're playing with it. Uh, it, it should not uh, make incredibly loud noises that perforate eardrums uh, at 4 o'clock in the morning. That's not acceptable. And the thing is that these five will be the thing that, de that development will come to you and say, test this. They want you to test these five things. Why do they want you to test these five things? Because these are the things that they need to have pass in order for it to go get to the user and be out of their their box, to be out of their responsibility. So they want to see these things. But as a tester, you can never just say, it's going to take me this long to test these five. You have to basically be able to say, it's going to take me this long to test everything. Because I don't know if there's going to be 97 uh, results. I don't know if there's going to be 326. I don't know if there's going to be two. Um, all I know is that I'm going to have to test it. And uh, there are going to be lots of results as 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 consequence. So what do you do with all these? You don't just send them to the product manager. You send them both to the product manager and, and the developer. Uh, why? It's very important that you send it to both. Because when the product manager finds out what 6 through 97 are, they're going to want to talk to a developer as to why that little red truck, when it turns green, as soon as you stop playing with it, why it blows up. And nothing can hurt your relationship more with a developer than a product manager walking into a developer's office and yelling at them because you told them that it was okay to and you gave them reason to, but you didn't tell the developer, hey, heads up, these are my findings. You, know, you never want to do that. So your job as a tester is to not allow someone to, to, to define what your job is. It is your job to determine the functionality of whatever it is that, that you're being given so that you can then provide the information to product management and development to make the intelligent decision of whether or not a particular product should be deployed. If 
they do have things like that where it causes addiction and, with cocaine and it blows up. And product management comes back and says, okay, yeah, we need this. Let's deploy it. Um, it's, as a tester, it's your job to say, okay, let's deploy. That's, that's it. Um, it might seem really absurd and dumb, but if you don't, you'll likely find yourself without a job. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's the honesty on, in it. Um, from a more of an uh, integrity-based standpoint, uh, yeah, you should absolutely turn around and say, um, okay, uh, pull your head out of your uh, butt. I am not approving this drops Mike. I don't know who Mike is, but he gets dropped a lot. Or you could do something like this. Um, and likely find yourself without a job and then they'll hire someone that will come in and give a, a thumbs up um, and uh, and then it'll get deployed anyway and then there will be people everywhere exploding from flashing green trucks. Um, your best way to protect against this is specifically this right here. Um, it's this concept. The reason why you test all of this is it might sound like I'm saying that you should do this to protect your job, but you're not doing it for that. You're, you're testing all of this to protect the user. Um, especially when you're talking about things like websites, um, where people trust organizations and websites to be secure, uh, you are not testing one through five because uh, the product management and developing teams want you to. You're testing everything so that you can return back and say, hey, I found some pretty awful um, vulnerabilities associated with this thing, um, and I am afraid for the user's ability to use this without them being at risk of things that they otherwise trust us to protect them against. Um, that is why you are testing it from this perspective and not just this perspective. So as, as a tester, your, your job is to determine functionality, not to determine quality, not to determine if something is ready to be deployed or not. Your job is to, to get all of this so you can send it to these two so that they can determine um, between the two of them what this party will accept. Not necessarily what they need or what they want, but will accept. Uh, because the bottom line in so many organizations is is what governs the decisions and behaviors of it. That if the product management believes that the user will be fine with an with an exploding truck, they'll they'll deploy an exploding truck. But it's your job not to tell them that that's wrong or right. It's your job to determine its functionality and give them the information that they need, so that when people start getting in trouble for exploding trucks, you have your documentation saying that you did your job of reporting on it um, and you wish that someone else would have done their job as well. So in that respect, you are protecting your job, uh, but you don't do it specifically to protect your job. There are very few instances where you'd actually have to use this uh, because for the most part, product management and development they're not, they're not douchebags, they're not assholes. Um, pardon my language, Nelly, but for the most part, they're not that kind of uh, group or person. Um, you'll occasionally come across the developer or the product manager who thinks that they're you know, God's gift to coding and the technology world, but they're horribly wrong. And you'll have to, this, this will become something that your job depends on. But for the most part, you're doing it because of this. So if you have a desire to figure out exactly how something works, testing is a great field to be in because it is your job to figure out exactly how it works and to, to deliver a definition of that to everyone else that you interact with on the backside or on, on the previous step and on the uh, ongoing step 
um, so that they can do a better job of providing whatever it is that your company has decided that you're making back to a user to be sold in one manner or another. Um, so that is in as much of a nutshell as I can possibly come up with what testing is and that what you as a tester would be doing. Um, how to do this? It changes from each product to each product significantly. Um, as to how one begins testing, uh, that's where you can go to all those different websites that'll say, oh, this is how you do testing because that's how they figured it out and that's how they got started. Um, specifically with my way of getting testing um, or how I got into testing, I really just started doing it. I was working for this company. I was doing technical support for them. We had this application out um, that was supposed to go through and scan uh, your system for uh, potentially leaked uh, uh, secure information uh, that should be encrypted and then uh, should respond back and say, hey, here is a pool of non-encrypted information that should be encrypted. You might want to investigate where the leak is at so that you can fix it. And that was the intent of, of the tool. Well, while I was in support, I thought that was very interesting. So I, I got a license for this application um, and started playing with it at home. And I made some remarks and, and took notes on everything that I noticed. Um, I, I guess I can show it to you. Um, I mean, I guess I don't know if I can show it to you. So, sorry, they, they've actually come back to me and asked that I do some testing for them on a newer version of it. Um, but let me... Uh, Gosh, that's just, actually, I find that very confusing. I'm going to have to, oh, maybe, no, okay, never mind. Sorry, um, I'm in the middle of doing some testing for this company on this particular application, uh, but it hasn't been released yet, so that's why I don't think I can show you. But um, uh, I'm trying to think of a good interface that I can use to demonstrate this. You know, let's just, let's just use Google, you know, why not? With the... Uh, um, Let's just say that Google was the application that I got, right? So I um, I went home, got the application, booted it up, started looking at it, and started noticing things and pointing things out. Whether or not they knew about them or cared about them or was even useful to mention to them, I would point it out. Um, uh, for, for instance, uh, just sitting here on the Google's homepage, it looks like you have four or five different shades of gray going on in a different formats, right? Like you got the bold Google search here that bolds even further and becomes darker. When you mouse over it, you have this weird pop-up highlight. Um, you get an underline up here, but it doesn't pop out and bold like it does over here. Um, huh. uh, you have this awesome weird behavior that you can see that when you mouse off of it, it doesn't actually change back immediately. It hangs for a second, which could be a result of some uh, poor jQuery that's being done or too um, robust of a library that's being imported in. And so it's taking extra time to react to the actual mouse over function. So I, I would write all of this down. I would say, okay, I've noticed this. I've noticed these different shades of gray giggity. And I would say, okay, well, this only underlines and doesn't bold, but this bolds and highlights the button and actually changes um, the border on it. And this does the same behavior as up here. Um, and so do these down here, but these are on a gray backdrop and this is on a straight white backdrop. Why don't you have the header with the same as the footer to help give better um, context to the page? And so I would, I would offer up and say all these things, all these things I was viewing and thinking about it, and I bundled it all up put it into an email, send it over to the, to the development crew. Um, now, I hadn't met anyone in development at this time. Um, uh, at least not that I knew of that they were in development. Um, I, uh, but I sent them an email with all of these notes on behavior that I had noticed and said, hey, this is my first experience with it. Thought you guys would want to know I work in support. Um, sorry if this bothers you. I, didn't, I don't know if this is, accept is acceptable or not. Let me know. And I got a response back for them. And they said, hey, this is great. Could you send us more? 
And I was like, okay, more, more of what? I don't know what you mean by more. Um, but I went back at it, looked at something else, and started looking at the website, and started tinkering around with the website, and making observations based off the website that I could figure out, and um, ended up taking this application that I got a license for and becoming an expert at it. Um, so much that uh, I became our first kind of support for the application, even though it was not really well received by the general public and there weren't many people that used it. I became the support professional for it. Um, and from there, they realized, hey, we have someone in support that did this. We should actually hire on a full-time tester because it appears as though we have enough work for someone to do this full time. Um, so they opened up a position and I went and applied for it and got it. Um, and so the, the best way that I know of how to start doing testing is to just do it. You go and you find something that you like, um, something that catches your interest, something that you can really get behind, and you start playing with it and send whoever it is that you can that will listen to you your feedback. Um, how you play with it, what kinds of things you can do with it, um, what kinds of things you can't do with it that you expected that you would be able to do with it. Uh, all sorts of things like that. Um, for instance, here's, a, here's an example. Let's, uh, here's, uh, this is something I found that I used as an, as an example once. So it just, it just came to mind. Um, let's just see if it's going to load. Okay, great. So here's Overstock. Overstock.com. That's nice. Thank you. Um, if I type in Halo to Overstock.com, I'm going to get wedding rings. Tons and tons and tons of wedding rings. As a gamer, when I think of Halo, I do not think of rings at all, even a little bit. But look over here, I don't, like you have all, the, all these options, you don't have an option for video games. You have only ring styles. It's just, it's, it's frustrating because here you have a search and it's saying, oh, we're only going to stipulate that your search is going to be refined to jewelry and watch. You didn't search it. I didn't say specifically jewelry and watch. I just typed in Halo, and it kicked me to jewelry and watch. However, if I type in video games, oh, I got video games here. Oh, I can narrow my results from here. Thank you. Oh, look, I got Halo here. So why is it that when I type in Halo up here, I get wedding rings, when I go to specifically a video game section, that I have to specify, that's the only time I can get Halo as a video game. So that's a that's a behavior that I would report and say this is un, this is not expected. I don't know why it immediately kicks you to and says that well, when you type in Halo that you have to be talking about jewelry and watches. Why it can't also include video games. And down here it says, oh, related searches, Halo 4, Halo Reach. If it knows that this is something that people have searched for that's related to this, why isn't it part of the search results? So you get all of this feedback, all these experiences, and you put that all together into a document, and you send it to them and say, hey, I noticed all of these things. Um, and besides that, you also offer up suggestions of things that could be done, that not necessarily things that have to be done, but things that could be done to help um, alleviate that kind of stress from the user's perspective. And what that does is that it, it helps to indicate to the person that receives it that you're not just someone who likes to point out flaws and problems and laugh at them, that you're someone who sees problems and flaws and says, hey, how can we make that better? Not how can you, how can we make that better? You immediately inject yourself into their mind as being part of the solution and not just someone pointing out the problem. Um, so how to be a tester, my best advice I can give is to just start doing it. It doesn't necessarily have to be just with, with uh, browsers or websites or applications or on a computer. If you want to pick up a toy, go to the dollar store and pick up a toy. Um, if you have dollar stores, I don't know, I've never been to 
where you live. But if you find something on the side of the road, uh, that's not going to kill you or give you a disease. <laughs> Pick it up and play with it. Figure out what you can do with it. Figure out who made it. Send them the results of whatever it is that you made or that you, that you played with in the entirety of what you were able to do with it. And that provides to them some value. And over time, if you can provide a company with enough value of, of um, how you interact with something and the amount of functionality that you're able to describe to them, uh, they're going to realize that having you on board is more beneficial than not having you on board. Um, so my, my best, best advice I can give to you on how to start testing is to just start doing it. Just start playing, start recording things, start um, uh, documenting it, send out emails, and just start doing it. Um, and I, I can go into a little bit more later about how documentation works, how it can work, things I'd recommend doing while doing documentation. Um, and perhaps I'll do that for my for my my next video. But for the most part, what you need to to remember is that you, as a tester, are to determine functionality and communicate that. That's it. Everything else is left up to everyone else in the process of determining what that functionality means to the product or the, to, to the company in general. So, Nelly, I hope, I hope this has been helpful. I hope this has been educational. I hope that this hasn't confused you further, and I hope this hasn't deterred you from wanting to go into testing. Um, it's not for the faint of heart. Um, some developers would probably argue that it is for the faint of heart and that's the kind of testers they like. Uh, if you enjoy figuring things out and, and demonstrating how things work as opposed to being told how something works, testing is a wonderful uh, 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 profession to have. Okay, let me know if you have any questions, um, and uh, I'll I'll try and work on work on something maybe about documentation for you um, in a future video. But I'll I'll wait to get some feedback from you on this one first uh, to make sure that I'm not doing something wrong that confuses you or that you don't like. Okay, high fives and stuff. Bye.